Ho, James with uh, Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. Um, and uh, today I'm going to talk about how to prep uh, blood for a progesterone test. So, I use this product. I know it's backwards, but it's the Target Canine Ovulation Test Kit. I swear by this product. Um, basically, you buy this from TargetVet.com. And there's some ingredients that you use, mix together. You drop a little blood on one of these little white cylinders. And I'm fixing to do one, so we'll just open this one up. Uh, the product costs $144 for 12 tests with two-day shipping from targetbet.com. Um, and these are little cylinders that you use here. And they basically uh, turn blue when the dog's not ready and go white when they are ready. And I've got videos specifically on how you do this. But this is, this is, I thought I'd do a video today about the blood. So I've just went and pulled some blood from one of my Frenchies. So first thing is, what do I use? I use a 22 gauge needle, one inch long, 22 gauge needle. And by the way, you used to be able to buy these on Amazon. For some reason, you can't anymore without a vet license, but you can still buy them on eBay. So I buy these little needles, and I think I paid $7 delivered for 100 needles of dirt cheap. You can go buy one from your vet. You might be able to buy one from uh, your kind of uh, tractor supply stores that are around the country, those kind of places, you know, agricultural type stores. But anyway, for me, now it's eBay, um, 7 cents a piece, very expensive. Okay, I like to use a 1cc syringe. You really don't need to pull very much. This is more than enough blood to do a test. Um, and the thing I like about a 1cc syringe is, is when you pull the needle back, you're not producing a huge vacuum if you get in a hurry. Um, if you use like a 5cc syringe and you pull the needle back, you get an air gap behind it. Um, you can, um, I, I don't know if I've got the right word right, but I think it's called hemolyze the blood, where the red blood cells start to pile up and it blocks the syringe up and you can't pull, although you're in the vein, you can't pull blood doesn't happen with a 1cc. Much easier to use, in my opinion, a 1cc. Again, I buy, I buy those on Amazon. Um, I think it's like $7 for 100 of those. Not very expensive. Those you still can buy on Amazon. And if not, you can certainly buy them on eBay. All right. So I've got this loaded up here. Um, let's see if you can show it to you. That is a 22-gauge needle. That's pretty small. It looks big there, but it's a pretty fine needle. It, the dog doesn't hardly feel it when that goes in. I had somebody the other day who called me up and they were using an orange uh, tip needle and I said, oh, well, that's a, uh, that's a 30G. The higher the number, the smaller needle. That's a 30G. That's for diabetes. Very small. I don't think you get any blood out of that. I think that's probably not what you want. So a 22-gauge needle is fine. 20-gauge needle is bigger. It gets blood quicker, makes a bigger hole, probably hurts more. It's fine too. 21-gauge, 23-gauge, I think any of those numbers. I would not end up with a really long needle, like a one and a half inch needle. It's, it's a, a bit tricky to handle. I like this one inch needle. A one inch 22 gauge needle with a one cc syringe works perfectly for me. Okay, so, so, so now here's, a, here's the, I think the clever part about this, is that how do you spin this down? Well, you've got, you've got to separate the blood from the, the plasma from the blood. You're gonna use plasma, the clear fluid, when you run this test with the target test kit. All right, so, there's a number of ways you can do this. So the first thing is, you don't need to go buy collection tubes. I just go take the little, this is the cap that uh, uh, protects the needle. I just use the cap, so I stick it in the cap, and I just squeeze from the bottom so I don't get an air in the bottom of it. I just fill it up with blood, like that. And there it is, all right. And you can see, and I used up about 0.8 of a cc. So I've got more than enough, probably do two tests here, but I'm just going to do one test. All right, now, you've got to separate this. So here's the clever part. Now, you've, you've got three ways you can do this. You can just let this sit at room temperature. It's probably going to take you four, five, six, seven hours, and it will finally separate out. That's one way. What happens is the blood coagulates, and you get some clear fluid on top. That's one way to do it. Okay, let me go outside. So there's two other ways. And let's turn my camera around. Head outside. So, what I do is I use a, a, a centrifuge. I actually sell these products, um, and it's like 85 bucks for a centrifuge. I mean, it's a great way of doing it because it's just really quick. It separates the blood literally in just a couple of minutes. 
So I'm going to set this up. So I've got this set it right here. I drop this into one of these little things here. Hey, cat, come to say hi. Then, okay, out of the way, Ed. A special Ed right there. Ed's going to help. Then I'm going to plug it in, and it's on the fastest setting. Uh, there we go. And off it goes. And um, he doesn't like that noise. He's out of here. Right, so there it is, it's spinning, and I'm going to run that now for a couple of minutes on the fastest setting. You can't hurt the blood. If you're spinning sperm down, by the way, you've got to go at a very slow speed. You can't spin it this fast. But for blood, just crank her up, let her spin. A couple of minutes, it's done. But here's another way to do it. And there it is up there. It's nothing more than a ceiling fan. I'll turn the ceiling fan off now. And you'll see what I did here. Oops, I did the wrong thing off. There it is, right there. And what that is, is that, that same little cat that I had before, and uh, I just taped it up, taped it up well to a ceiling fan. It'll take about an hour, and in about an hour, that blood will separate. Don't need a centrifuge. If you're, if you're just gonna do this occasionally, and you don't wanna spend that, you know, 85 bucks on a centrifuge, do it this way, it works great. And it'll separate out nicely. Now, uh, I'm doing this outside, it's a little bit cool out here, it doesn't separate quite as well when it's cold, but I do this because it came loose, I might have a few blood spatters on the wall, let's take a garden hose and clean it off. If I did that in the house, my wife would probably kill me if it came loose. So make sure you've got this thing taped up well. But I mean, it doesn't take that much to do it, I mean, just tape it up properly. If you do that, then uh, there's, a, there's a cheap and simple centrifuge for you. Just a, a really, really simple way of doing it. Now I want to go back to this guy over here. So this has not really been running long enough yet. Let's just see where we are with this. All right. And you need a pair of hemostats because the uh, little thing sits down inside it. And there it is. And there it is, separated already. So you can see the red blood on the bottom and the plasma on the top. I just need two drops of that test and there's probably 10 drops in there. So you just don't need even that much blood to do it. But anyway, that, that's just a, you know, it's just a really simple way of doing it. Um, set centrifuge, yep, best way, cost you money. Ceiling fan, solution number two, take you about an hour. The last one is just leave it on the counter and wait and it will separate out. So that's really it, um, and uh, James James at uh, Love My Pups and uh, MyBreedersSupply.com, and uh, good luck with your breeding, and uh, if you need any advice, we're here to help in any way we can, and have a great day. Bye-bye.